Now, we can remember the playground and all the wonderful things that happen at the playground. So, this is Tali, my daughter. She's a storyteller. She would arrive to the playground and immediately start creating these fantasy stories and games and create and invite everyone to join her. She was using her imagination, but at the same time, she was developing social skills. Alan, the explorer. Alan loved to run around and loved to climb every single structure he could find. But his favorite ones were the monkey bars. He would do one and the other and the other. Tireless. He would never get tired and he would stay on it persistently until he could master the skill. Alan was having fun, but he was also developing his motor skills. And persistence and perseverance and planning and sticking to goals. Those are all things that we do when we engage in executive functions. My youngest, Nico. Nico was the builder. His favorite thing was the sandbox. He would arrive and start making these huge, huge sandcastles. Of course, he couldn't do it alone. So he would get other kids to come and help him. When you get a bunch of five-year-olds together in a sandbox, you get a lot of fighting. Thankfully, Nico is a natural leader and he will coordinate jobs and make sure that things were as planned and there was no conflict. He was exercising leadership skills and at the same time, design thinking and yes, engineering. My three kids, Tali, Alan and Nico, used to have tons of fun at the playground. And at the same time, they were learning and engaging in important tasks of learning and child development motor, social, cognitive, emotional, moral development. I joke with my students in Child Development 101 that a lot of the things that we teach in that class could be really learned at the playground. Now think about the playground and contrast it with this other image, the playpen. The playpen is limited. It limits the possibilities of children, limits in imagination, limits motor skills, limits creation, limits social interactions. However, yes, it's safe. It's a safe place. If I need to go cook, I can put my child in the play playpen, go cook, come back, it'll still be there, and let's try to climb out. So, I use these two metaphors, the playground and the playpen, to help us think about the role of technologies in the life of young children. The technologies will change today, tomorrow, as new products come to market. What will not change is the developmental needs and possibilities of young children. And the playground and the playpen are still with us and will still be with us. What's unique about the playground is it allows children to make things, to create, to become producers and not just consumers. And in the world of technology, this kind of production happens by programming, by making. Coding is the new literacy. So I'm gonna share today two different projects that I've been working in my research group that engages young children in coding. First one is Scratch Junior, and it's a free app that people can download and helps children, five to seven year old, make stories, animations, games, anything they want. Let me walk you through it. So you start Scratch Junior, and you can choose a character or a background that you want, you can make your own, or you can take a picture. Okay, so I'm gonna choose a plant. And I'm gonna go and choose a character. I'm gonna go from a library, and I'm gonna choose my frog. There's a lot of life cycle study in kindergarten. And I'm gonna program my frog to do things. When the green flag is click, it's gonna jump two times, it's gonna grow, it's gonna shrink, and I'm gonna record the sound. You couldn't hear it, but it says plop. I'm gonna repeat this action four times, and I'm gonna end my program. Now watch the frog, and you can see highlighted the behaviors. 
and you hear the reverb. So now I can go and continue my story. I can make a new page, and I can also use text. This is how children who might not know how to read or write can start learning how to program. Scratch Junior, we launched it in collaboration with my colleagues at the MIT Media Lab and the Playful Invention Company late this summer. And since July, we had 200,000 downloads all over the world. We're developing resources, we have teachers uh, commenting and using, and it's really, really exciting. However, think back of the playground. Scratch Junior really doesn't capture the full physicality of the space of the playground. Doesn't cap capture either children working together and the social aspects of the playground. So my second project, Kibo, a robot kid. And Kibo is a robot kid for young children, four to seven year olds, to learn programming and sequencing and engineering without the need of a screen or a tablet. Your programming language is a set of wooden blocks that you see down there. Blocks are color coded. And how are they getting into the robot? The robot has a scanner. You can see there a transparent face. And you scan block by block to get the instructions into the robot. The robot has sensors. So there is something that looks like an eye. And that is light sensor. It will detect bright or dark. It also has distance sensor that looks like a telescope. It will detect if the robot is far or near. There's in the back something that looks like an ear to detect sound. If there's a clap, it will do something or it will do something else. If there's no sound, and a light bulb. Kids love to play with lights and controlling lights. But Kibo is not finished without the imagination of the children. Children can use arts and recyclable materials to make anything they want. They can create a dog on a sled or a ballerina or a spinning cow. However, remember, Robotics and coding, it's all about programming. It's all about making these projects come to life. How does it happen? Let's hear the expert. I'm going to say, um, begin, mm -hmm. beep, go forward, then um, we're going to be like... To the right, no, to the left, to the right, left, right, left, right, left. Right, left. Right, left. Why do we want four and five year olds to learn how to program? As I said before, Coding is the new literacy. The same way that we teach young children to learn how to read and write, because we believe it's important, it offers new ways to think about the world and new ways to express yourself. The same is true with coding. When we learn how to code, we are learning how to think in sequentially. We are learning how to think about logic. We are learning how to solve problems where the order doesn't work the way we want it. And most importantly, we're also able to express ourselves, to create anything we want. Of course, it will be wonderful if these children grow to become scientists and engineers. We need more of them. But that's not the only reason. We don't teach young children to learn how to write so they can all become professional journalists or professional novelists, but we teach them, teach them how to write so they can create a love poem, a story, a business plan, a shopping list. Same is true for coding. Research shows that if we don't start young, we're really missing an opportunity. By fourth grade, stereotypes regarding people who are not good at math and science, technology, and engineering, the field of STEM, are already formed. Wow, that's early. Isn't that ironic that most of our robotic programs and STEM programs start in middle school and high school? Why are we starting early? where children are curious and they want to learn about the world, and they are open to learn new things. Research also shows the economical benefits of programs that start in early childhood. Why wait until things don't go right and have to create remedial programs? That is a waste of resources. Let's start early, where children are eager and can learn. Of course, it's easier said than done. We need to have 
technologies that are developmentally appropriate, that allow children to learn by engaging in some of the same type of learning experiences that happen at the playground. And we need to be able to integrate learning how to code with what teachers need to be teaching. So the way we've been doing is working with teachers, integrating what they're doing. It turns out that in kindergarten and first grade, learning about our community and our neighborhood is very important, and it's part of the curriculum. So one of the ways we've been doing it is by helping children create maps of their neighborhoods and programming their keyboard robots to go from one place to the other. And we also, during this summer, we had to create a curriculum about the robotic soccer World Cup. And again, being from Argentina, I love dancing. And of course, we have a curriculum on our dancing. And we will have children explore the different dances that happen all over the world. We can have some salsa. We also have China, the lion dance. We have group dances as well. <laughs> Those robots are made with uh, coffee filters and it's very, very hard for kids to really coordinate so they don't run into each other. And of course, we have a serious curriculum and we sit around the classroom and we help them learn and integrate. And we start by teaching them about the engineering design cycle. The engineering design process starts by asking a question, imagining a solution, planning, creating a prototype, testing and improving, sharing with others and asking a new question. This iterative process of learning happens everywhere. It's not just in engineering and in programming. It happens when we write, when we revise draft after draft, it happens when we do sports, when we practice and repractice. It happens if we do business and we have to refine our product based on customer's feedback. It's everywhere. Learning is not about getting it right the first time or passing the one test at the end. It's really about the process of revising and revising and learning and sharing with others. So how do we start teaching four and five-year-olds? We start by asking them a question. And our question is, how can we make a robot dance the hockey pokey? You put your robot in, you put your robot out, you put your robot in, and you do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. So, we don't learn by being told, we learn by doing. So, we have here our keyboard robot, and all together, we're going to make this robot dance the hokey pokey. Let me refresh you of the, of the of the tools we have here. I'm gonna ask a helper to come and hold the mic so I can have my two hands. So, we're gonna start our program by having a begin block and by having an end block. And they are green and red, just like writing a sentence. You have a capital letter and you have a period. And then I'm gonna have my blocks. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna refresh all of you about the Hockey Pokey song for Kibo. So it's gonna be, you put your robot in, you put your robot out, you put your robot in, and you shake it all about. You do the Hockey Pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. I'm gonna ask the camera just to show this one time so you can see your piece of code. Switch to camera. So now this is your piece of code. Hopefully. Again. So now if we switch back to the computer, I'm gonna ask everyone, I'm a horrible singer, I can do many things but I cannot sing, so I'm gonna ask everyone to get up, and you're gonna have, those are the words, we're gonna do, it's a fast hockey pokey, we're gonna sing it very fast at this pace, you put your robot in, you put your robot out, put your robot in and you shake it all about very, very fast, and I'm gonna turn the robot and it's gonna dance according to us. 
So when I say three, I'm gonna turn it on first. And are you all ready to sing? Yes. Really loud? Yes. Because you don't wanna hear me, right? Yes, okay. One, two, three. You put your robot in, you put your robot out, you put your robot in, and you shake it all about. You do the pokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Whew. Thanks. So, my children are old right now, and I don't get them to take them to the playground as often as I want. However, every time we go, I'm reminded of the power of new technologies, and I'm inspired to go back to my lab and keep designing technologies that feel like playgrounds and at the same time teach children how to code and how to program. In 2006, we got a nice grant from National Science Foundation that allowed us to build 60 prototypes of Kibo and go into schools and try them out. And we did, and we got excellent results. And every time I went around and I gave a talk, the first hand raised, and I was expecting a good question about my statistically significant results, but no. The first question was, how can I get a Kibo for my kid, for my grandkid, for my school, for my library, for my after school? And at the time, I did not have a good answer. Research doesn't go out like that. So I decided to join forces and really put a lot of effort, and we created a company in 2018, Kindler Robotics, whose mission is to take Kibo out into the world. So I'm going to ask you to please help me spread the word and make sure that we have more playgrounds and less playpens for young children. Thank you.